Hello and welcome to Trek Untold, the Star Trek podcast that goes beyond the stars. I am your host, Matthew Kaplowitz. And welcome to a special mini-sode of Trek Untold focused on Star Trek Picard Season 3. I've been really loving every second of this season so far. It's been excellent storytelling, perfectly balanced with just the right amount of fan service. It's original while remembering its roots, and aside from some nitpicks here and there that I do have, like the changeling bucket thing, by the way, which really every changeling has a container just like Odo, okay, sure, why not? But outside of little things like that, it's just been a truly amazing experience, and for me, such a huge improvement over the last two seasons. Now, if you didn't figure it out yet, this is gonna be a very spoiler-filled mini-sode, especially when I tell you who the guest is. So, if you are not caught up yet to Star Trek Picard Season 3, Episode 6, press pause right now. For those of you still with me, let's talk about the episode titled The Bounty, which was stockpiled with Star Trek history and references, especially those in the Daystrom Institute. There were Easter eggs galore in there, like the deadly attack triple, a second Genesis device, and even James Kirk's body? Well, yeah, if you haven't seen that one, you better go back and rewatch that part. That's pretty cool. But the moment I think a lot of fans were waiting for, and it was something that we first saw at NYCC 2022, finally arrived in this episode, and that was the return of Daniel Davis as Moriarty. And that, folks, is who's joining us today on Trek Untold. Daniel Davis first appeared on Star Trek The Next Generation as Sherlock Holmes' arch-rival in the Season 2 episode, Elementary, Dear Data, and again in Season 6's Ship in a Bottle. He's a character fans always wanted to see more of, and I'm happy he finally had a chance to show up one more time in this franchise. Beyond Star Trek, though, you know Daniel from his time on all six seasons of The Nanny as Niles the Butler. I watched The Nanny religiously, especially being from Queens, New York. I loved Niles' dry humor and his feud with CeCe Babcock, which ultimately turned out to be true love. It's a great series and something I still love watching reruns of. But Daniel's also done a ton of things on TV and the theater world outside of The Nanny and Star Trek, but unfortunately, we're going to have to save that for another interview when I get to spend some more quality time with Mr. Davis. But for now, make sure your program safety protocols are set to fun, because I'm chatting with Daniel Davis about the return of Moriarty in Picard. Yeah, Mr. Davis, I got to tell you, I uh, was at New York Comic Con 2022 at the Star Trek panel last year, and I was there for the debut of the footage of Picard, and right. uh, a lot happened to that trailer, but I have to tell you, when you showed up on screen, when your voice came on, the entire room exploded. I've never heard a room that loud in my life. Oh my God, that's yeah. so wonderful. Actually, Michael Dorn uh, sent me an email, and he said, your face just came on the screen, and 4,000 people stood up and screamed. <laughs> yeah, that is absolutely <laughs> it like, accurate. It was absurd. Oh, it, it, it made my day. It also brought tears to my eyes to hear it. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, did you know that your character was just that popular and that big to the fans of the Star Trek universe? I have been finding out slowly but surely over the years. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know until the first convention that I went to. Mm -hmm. uh, conventions had been happening for years. I I knew nothing about them, and I ran into um, Bob Picard uh, at, at at Kate Mulgrew's house actually, and he said. You know, I do conventions all the time and people are always asking about you. Why don't you do them? And I said, I never heard of them. And he said, oh, well, I, I will make this happen. So he hooked me up with a, man a manager that he was working with at the time. And so I started going. Well, the first panel that I did was, it, it was amazing because <laughs> it was really like, it was in that big hotel in Vegas. There were like 4,000 people in the room. Oh, yeah. and it was, ah. And I, that was when I found out, and I was astonished. And I did very well at the autograph table that year. <laughs> I'm sure you did. Yeah, so I, I've been back several times, but since COVID came along, um, you know, there haven't been conventions in a while. So I'm hoping to get back to them, especially now that we've got this episode of Picard, uh, that people will be like, oh, let's get him back. So fingers crossed. I'm, I'm sure it's going to happen. I mean, people are, are waiting to meet folks like you. And uh, I know, speaking for myself, I would love to get your autograph, love to get a photo. But, uh, you know, for the time being, I get this wonderful FaceTime with you here in this show, which is amazing. Oh, good. Uh, but, you know, let's talk about Picard a little bit now. So, you know, what was your reaction when you got the call that they wanted you to revive Moriarty in the new Picard series? Were you shocked to hear that? Well, I'd had my fingers crossed since the moment it began, um, because I, I told Patrick this, the first episode as soon as i saw the heard the theme 
I started to cry. I was so <laughs> happy to see it come back and to see him. And I kept thinking, oh, please, please, please bring Moriarty back. Then back in November of 21, 2021, we're in the midst of COVID and uh, the phone rings and it's my agent. He said, we've heard from Star Trek. And I said, yes. And he said, don't you need to know what it is? I said, no, it, whatever it is, it's yes. And he said, well, they want you obviously to come and do Moriarty. And because they keep things under wraps, um, I didn't see a script. I just said, yes, mm -hmm. apparently they had begun to write, but didn't want to keep writing until they had me locked in to do it. So I said, yes, tell them yes, and then finish writing it. <laughs> so my own little fantasy about it, uh, the scenario that I wrote in my head was, this is going to be a resolution between Captain Picard and myself uh, about the broken promise of getting me off the holodeck that he made to me. I'll get you off, I'll find a way. And, and he obviously never did. And so Roddenberry told me once, uh, Picard doesn't make promises he can't keep or won't keep. So I kept thinking, all right. So then I I finally get the the sides, the you know the pages that I'm on, and I thought this isn't even Moriarty. This is not Moriarty. I don't know who this is. Yeah, it's a very and different it, character this time around. It's the same persona different. but different person, really. Yeah, exactly. And I I was so puzzled that I um, I got my agent to put me in touch with one of the producers. And I said, I really don't understand who this is. And they said, oh, well, you will. <laughs> I thought, can I know before I do it? And it's like, I just couldn't get an answer about, you know, what I was doing. So <clears throat> when CBS called and said they wanted me to do this uh, uh, afternoon of interviews with people, I said, I can't because I haven't seen it. I've got to see it. And so they sent me a screener and I watched it. And then suddenly I thought, oh, I see what I was supposed to do, and I did it without knowing <laughs> that I had done it. Um, I think it was some sort of, um, it's just a way, I was a, 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 an almost a mechanism for getting data discovered. And mm. I was a figment or an, a manifestation of whatever function data's brain is doing to you know, introduce the crow, introduce Moriarty, introduce you know, Pop Goes the Weasel for Riker to go. Ah, Data is around here somewhere. He must be. So I think that was my function. And to do it, I had to be menacing and threatening, which was something that we had given up in Ship in a Bottle long time ago. So that's why I was puzzled. But then once I saw it, I thought, oh, well, I was the perfect choice for this then to do that. I mean, Moriarty was the perfect choice to bring them all together at last. And uh, I have to say, when when LeVar sees Data, I, I get, I'm the biggest <laughs> crybaby in the world. I just flooded. Same. It was oh, so powerful. So it worked out really, really well that, you know, sometimes if an actor just says the words on the page, <laughs> it it works. So I mean, it's an actor who knows what they're doing here and understands the, the character of Moriarty, even if it's not the same Moriarty you played 20 years ago. And you, you still, you got it. And I love seeing you be a mean, angry killer Moriarty. That's just so fun to watch. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So how do you think the fans will respond to this new version or this take on Moriarty? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's going to be like New York Comic Con around the internet. Everybody's going to be screaming their heads off as soon as they hear your voice and they see your face. Because uh, again, I knew that it was coming because I saw that trailer, but right. still actually seeing it happen, like, I, you know, you said you were crying for LeVar. I was crying for you, honestly, too. Like, oh, it was so you. wonderful to see you back. It legitimately oh, was. And, that you know, you talked sense. earlier about, you know, how the script's kind of under wraps, too. I, I'd love to hear, you know, so much has changed since you did TNG, and not just, like, the sets, the way the scripts are kept very secret. Uh, right. So from your perspective, you know, what is new about being on Picard Season 3? The fact that it's also a different Picard. Hmm. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, very I mean, much so. It's a different Picard. It's an older uh, weathered, uh, wiser, more reasoned, but more cynical, um, uh, has seen it all, done it all. And then in the midst of all of this, he finds out he has a son mm -hmm. and that he has passed on a bad gene to this son. And, you know, it's, um, it's just, it's actually turning out to be something I didn't anticipate. And it's turning out to be a wrap-up of Patrick as Picard um, 
although he says he's done he also says six months later never say never so <laughs> so i don't know what he's going to I, he talked we had a wonderful conversation which we'd really never been able to do the only time i'd ever been in his trailer uh was to um talk it was to rehearse the scene that we were about mm -hmm. to shoot and this time I was flown out I live in upstate New York and I was flown out to California and the first day of work I had to be tested of course for COVID because this was back in December of 21 and I had my wardrobe fitting and was walking across the parking lot saw Jonathan Frakes talking to someone but I didn't see who it was until I rounded the corner and Patrick uh, was standing in the doorway of his trailer and Jonathan said, look who's here. And uh, Patrick said, oh, Daniel, how wonderful you're back. I'm come in and chat. So I walked in, went into his trailer and sat for like an hour and a half, just shooting the breeze with Patrick Stewart. Wow. And it couldn't have been more wonderful for me. I mean, I idolized the guy and and I, I, he's a hero of mine, uh, not just for Picard, but for his stage work and the things I've seen him do on stage. And he is great friends with Ian McKellen. And I stood by for Ian McKellen in Amadeus on Broadway. So we gossiped a lot about Ian McKellen and had a good conversation about Ian. Um, so it, it, it's, I have really now, after three episodes, um, kind of become a part of the Star Trek family. And, it's, and they include me. Uh, at conventions, I go. I get to go out to dinner on the final night with them all, and that's that's a pretty wonderful thing. So, uh, but I think that um, I don't know. I haven't seen or heard very much about the fan reaction to Star Trek Picard. I don't know what they're thinking and feeling because when I got requests on Cameo, yep, uh, I said I can't talk about this. I'm under a non-disclosure agreement, and I am not allowed to to say anything and i did this was kind of it, it backfired on me and on them a little bit because uh the friday before comic-con they called my agent and said the nda is lifted as of sunday at five o'clock or whatever it was so the moment comic-con was over i started getting cameo requests and so i started talking about the episode well cbs and paramount shut me down faster than they said you can't be talking about that and it was like the agent said, well, you lifted the non-disclosure agreement. He said, but he can't be doing spoilers. And it was like, so I thought, oh, Christ, they're going to come after me with dogs. I'm going to, you know, they'll <laughs> hound me. But uh, I just stopped talking about it. So I'm finally able now to, the NDA is lifted. So yeah, thank goodness, because, yeah, I'd love to hear a little bit more, too, about your time being on the set, you know, because you got to basically have a very one-sided shootout with Jonathan Frakes, with Michael Dorn and Michelle Hurd. And yeah. again, this is like super villain bad guy Moriarty. So it seemed like you were all having just the time of your lives in that set. It was pretty much fun. It really was. And, um, and you know, Jonathan Jonathan is a very serious and, and fine actor, but he is also sort of known for, you know, trying to break people up and crack them up a little bit and they have fun on the set. But he has never done that with me. And I'm and I've always been hoping he's going to do something to crack me up, but he hasn't yet. And uh, so um, he'll get I'm I'm hoping he'll get another chance, another shot at me at some point. We had a great time. Um, Michelle, you know, was not as familiar with Moriarty, obviously, as Michael and and Jonathan were. But um, we all had a great time. And the time that we spend between setups, just sitting around in our chairs, that's that's when we have a lot of fun with each other and mm -hmm. cut up and gossip and tell stories. And we're all, you know, uh, connected to the theater as well as, as television and film. So theater stories abound, you know. I know if we had time today, I would be totally questioning you about Amadeus and some of your other work here, but uh, you know, I do want to actually take a trip back to the past for a second real quick. And I do want to ask you about your very first appearance as Moriarty uh, and specifically about your time working with Diana Moldar who, uh, you know, is no longer with us, but uh, you guys had wonderful scenes together. And I'd love to hear if you have any memories of working with her on your your first time on Star Trek. Well, I, I she was such a gracious uh, woman. I loved her on L.A. Law. Was it L.A. Law? Remember when she fell down the uh, elevator shaft? That's how they got rid of her. And we giggled a lot about that. I said, I will not be shoving you down any elevator shafts, I promise. Uh, and there's no poison in the tea. Um, the scones are homemade. I mean, we just went on and on, you know, and um, 
And she was wonderful to me and gracious to me. You know, when I auditioned for that, I walked in to, you know, the casting office at Paramount and Brian Bedford was there, um, who is no longer with us. But Brian and I had worked in Hamlet together, he playing Hamlet and me playing Rosencrantz. And um, I walked in and I saw him and we hadn't seen each other in 15 or 20 years. And um, he said, what are you here for? And I said, I'm here for Moriarty. What are you here for? He said, I'm here for Moriarty too. And I said, well, let's see what happens. So I was like, uh, but my real reaction was, I have, I have not got a shot at this. I haven't got a chance because Moriarty, I mean, Brian is a famous actor. He's well known. And uh, I'm just, you know, I haven't, I hadn't even done the nanny yet. And I was just, you know, this nobody. And I didn't think I had a shot. And when you don't think you have a shot, you get really relaxed, really fast. So I walked in and did it. And uh, it was the only, the it was the first time in my life that the there was a message on the phone machine when I got home that you got the part. And then um, before I'd even gotten home. And Brian Bedford called me later that night and said, no hard feelings, come to dinner. <laughs> so, same thing happened to me on The Nanny. I went to the network opposite Roddy McDowell, and I thought, oh, what am I doing here? <laughs> and then Fran called when I got in the role and said, I bet you thought it was going to be Roddy McDowell. Well, it would have been the Roddy McDowell show, and this is the Fran Drescher show. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so I thought, okay, now I know where I'm standing. <laughs> now, just a uh, last thing for you today, Mr. Davis. You know, uh, yes, this, you this is a big me. fanboy question here. So, you know, Moriarty from TNG, as we mentioned, he's still kind of spinning his proverbial wheels in a holodeck program with his beloved Regina. What would you like to have happened to those two characters 30 years later? What, what do you think they're doing right now? Um, I think they're waiting for Picard to make armbands for them so they can get off the holodeck. <laughs> Somebody's been watching Voyager. I like that. Yeah. Bob Picardo, every time I see Bob Picardo, he says, thank you. Without your part, I wouldn't have had a part. I said, Very yeah, true. why can't they make an armband for me? So that's that's the exchange we usually have. I don't know. I think that um, I think it would be very difficult to get um, the actress back to play Regina because she has retired and lives in Spain. And she said this. She told me this will be my my swan song. So. I don't know. He'd have to come back as a single man. Maybe her her program dissolved or something somewhere. <laughs> the Listen, there's a lot of single holograms out there. I'm sure Marty can do well for himself. He can find one, Caddy. You would Absolutely. think. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Daniel, I just want to tell you, you know, there, there has been a lot of Moriarty's in media, but it is tough to hold a candle to your performance on Star Trek as that master villain. I, I love watching you on Trek. Love the nanny, of course. And I just love spending this time with you today. So uh, thank you so much for real. This has been amazing. It was my entire pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Live long and prosper. <laughs> Indeed. Yes. I can make, never make my fingers do that. Close there. enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm left handed. So are you. How do you do it? I can't. I'm going to have to get. I'm actually stuff. right handed. I can't do it on the right. I only do it on the left. Oh. Weirdest I, thing. I'll get some scotch tape next time. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's it for this week's episode of Trek Untold. Until next time, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Trek Untold, all one word. If you'd like to directly support this podcast, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter over on patreon.com slash trekuntold, which gives you access to some great perks that can't be beat. Or pick up some merchandise from our store, or use my Amazon shop link to check out all kinds of different Star Trek merchandise. Links for all these things are in the show notes. Shout out to Triple Fiction Productions for being a key sponsor of Trek Untold. Don't forget to check them out and all of the fine folks whose ads you've seen or heard on this podcast too. If you have any questions, feedback, or comments for the show, or would like to suggest a guest or discuss sponsorship options for any of these episodes in the future, send me a message at trekuntold at gmail.com. I hope to see you here again as we uncover more untold stories from Star Trek and beyond and get to know even more amazing people who have contributed to this ever-expanding universe. Until next time, I'm Matthew Kaplowitz, and remember, fortune favors the bold. Trek Untold is sponsored by treksphere.com. Promoting fan-produced Star Trek content in all forms is powered by the Rageworks Podcasting Network and is affiliated with Nerd News Today.